Uh, interesting to note, however, that the one low bar was on the up bar. Low, the low volume bar was on the up bar. But now we're starting to see the market formed a wide range down bar with high volume. Now again, logic would dictate that on the next bar, if, if selling was coming into the market, that the very next bar would continue to go down if there was more supply than demand. It's a simple law of economics, and it's also a simple function of how the market maker works. If you don't understand why, then you've got to go back and review the prior disk. So now I'm seeing volume coming in, at this point, I could make the assumption that the market has turned just on the volume increasing on the down bar and then the follow through with the high volume on the up bar. Now as I continue the movement, you can see that once again, now for a third bar in a row, volume has increased. This one also happens to be a down bar. Now before I go on, I want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. When I say a down bar, what that means is that the close of the bar on the current bar is lower than the close on the prior bar. Now I know that the common conception is that if the open is greater than the close then it's an up bar and that if the close is lower than the open then it's a down bar. But I'm telling you again we need to put it into context. We need to make sure that we're we're putting things in, in a relative context. And I would say that if the market is making a higher close, then it doesn't matter necessarily that the market started higher and went, and, and went lower. What's important is that the market is closed at a higher price. So as long as today's close is above yesterday's, that bar is up. For example, this bar here, you can see that there was a gap down. And this bar closed intraday below the close of the prior day. That is a down bar. Now, why is the distinction important? Well, the distinction is important because we are looking for strength to come in on down bars. We're looking for weakness to come in on up bars. So as the market is moving up, we're looking for weakness. And as the market is moving down, we're looking for strength. Again, I deal with this in the prior video and it has to do with the mechanics of the market and the laws of supply and demand. Now getting back to our conversation here about the reversal. Now, what's important to look for and the signs of the bottom. Now, there are a couple of candlestick patterns uh, which I'm sure you are at least somewhat familiar with. The first is the hammer or inverted hammer at the bottom. Now, on this chart, we have a couple of examples. You can see that there are two inverted hammers there. Now, the uh, purist or the uh, uh, individual that has a lot more time to look at fib and our uh, candlesticks would um, would say that you know these the wicks are too big on the top. I'm not going to focus on that. So let me let me again with accurate thinking in mind let you know why 